In this class, we will talk about Fortinet Single Sign-On, known as FSSO, a module that you can use with FortiGate so that users do not need to log in repeatedly each time they access a different network resource. Here's an overview of what we will discuss. We'll compare the two methods for collecting user login information using FSSO, DC Agent Mode, and Polling Mode. It also shows NTLM authentication and Active Directory access modes. Additionally, you will learn how to configure FortiGate and the Collector Agent for FSSO, Troubleshoot, and Monitor it. After completing this class, you should have these practical skills. You will be able to collect login events using FSSO. You will also be able to compare the two access methods for collecting user and group information. Finally, you will learn how to configure and test an FSSO solution to transparently authenticate users. FSSO enables FortiGate to leverage your network's existing authentication system for firewall authentication. Once a user authenticates, he or she can access other network resources without having to authenticate again. FSSO is typically used with directory service networks such as Windows Active Directory or Novell eDirectory, but it can also be implemented in other network environments. Depending on the server that provides your directory services, you will deploy and configure FSSO differently. In this class and in the next slides, we are going to talk mostly about the two methods available for Windows Active Directory environments. Let's start with the Domain Controller Agent Mode. It requires one Domain Controller Agent installed on each Windows Domain Controller. If you have multiple DCs, this means multiple DC agents. The DC agents, as we will see later, monitor and forward user login events to another FSSO component called the Collector Agent. The Collector Agent is installed on a Windows server. It consolidates events received from the DC agents, then forwards it to the FortiGate. Here we show what happens between DC agents, the collector agent, and a FortiGate device configured for FSSO authentication. When a user authenticates with the DC, he or she provides their Active Directory account credentials. The DC agent notices the logging event and forwards it to the collector agent. If there are a few DCs, they might all be forwarding to one collector agent. The collector agent aggregates all login events, then forwards that information to FortiGate. The information sent by the collector agent contains the username, hostname, IP address, user groups. Now FortiGate knows who the user is at that IP address and which Active Directory group permissions also apply. So we can begin to apply the person's corresponding access permissions to various hosts and networks for that same person. So if the person now tries to access the internet, FortiGate compares the source IP address to its list of active FSSO sessions. In this case, the user has already logged on so FortiGate will not request that user authenticate again. How else can we inform FortiGate when an Active Directory user authenticates or logs off? Let's see polling mode. This can be either collector agent based or agentless. First, let's look at the collector agent based polling mode. Like the DC agent mode, this requires a collector agent to be installed on a Windows server. However, it doesn't require DC agents installed in each DC. So it is convenient for many DCs and can also be used where you cannot install a DC agent. But the trade-off is that the server with the collector agent must be much more powerful and it will also generate unnecessary traffic when there have been no login events. Instead, 
the collector agent contacts the DC and gets its information directly. Let's see an example of FSSO using the agent-based polling mode. Here again is a DC, a collector agent, and FortiGate, but the DC doesn't have an agent installed. So the collector agent is constantly polling the DC to ask if there are any new login events. The collector agent periodically polls the DC to ask if anyone has logged in. If any user has logged in since the last poll, the DC replies with that. Finally, the collector agent sends the login information to FortiGate. This is the same as the DC agent mode. When user traffic arrives at the FortiGate, it already knows who is at that IP address and no repeated authentication is required. Finally, you can alternatively deploy FSSO without installing any agents. Portigate will pull the DCs directly instead of receiving login information indirectly from a collector agent. Because Fortigate collects all of the data by itself, remember the DCs never initiate contact with a Fortigate to send login information. This method requires significantly greater system resources on your Fortigate and it doesn't scale as easily. Here we can see Fortigate polling the DC. There is no collector agent nor any DC agent. After the user logs in, Fortigate will discover that authentication during its next poll. Again, when the user sends traffic, Fortigate already knows whose traffic that is. Regardless of the login collector method you choose, there are these same FSSO requirements for your Active Directory network. Windows login events must have the workstation name and username, but not the workstation IP address. When the collector agent gets a login event, it will query a DNS server to resolve the IP address of the workstation, so it requires that you have your own DNS server. If a workstation IP address changes, DNS records must be updated immediately. Collectors must have connectivity with all workstations. Because an event log is not generated upon logoff, both a FortiGate or the collector agent must use a different method to verify whether users are still logged on. So collectors pull users workstation every few seconds to see if users are still there. This table summarizes the main differences between DC agent mode and polling mode. DC agent solutions are usually more complex. It requires not only a collector agent, but also a DC agent per DC. However, it's more scalable because the workload is distributed among all of the agents, the collector agent and the DC agents. Additionally, this deployment offers redundancy because you can have more than one collector agent. And because the DC agent is hosted on the DC itself, all login events will be captured and recorded. In comparison, if you use polling, quick login and log off events sometimes can be missed. If that happens, the user will need to authenticate more than once. In an Active Directory environment, FSSO can also work with NTLM authentication. We will see next an example of how NTLM authentication works. NTLM authentication does not require DC agents, but it is not fully invisible to users. They must enter their credentials again when the NTLM negotiation happens. Also, NTLM authentication is a Microsoft proprietary solution so its SSO capabilities are not supported by other vendors' browsers. NTLM is most useful when either users log in to DCs that, for some reason, cannot be monitored by the collector agent, or when there is a communication problem between the collector agent and one of the DC agents. In other words, 
NTLM authentication is best used as a backup to FSSO. This slide shows how the messages flow during NTLM authentication. As mentioned before, the process is triggered when FortiGate receives traffic from an IP address that doesn't exist in FortiGate's list of currently authenticated FSSO users. FortiGate then replies with an NTLM challenge to the user's browser requesting credentials. The user enters their username and password. FortiGate receives these, then authenticates these with the collector agent. FortiGate will also get from the collector agent the user groups that this user belongs to. If the credentials are correct, FortiGate authorizes access based on the user's group memberships. We mentioned that unlike full FSSO, NTLM authentication is not transparent for users. This is because in most of the browsers, and by default in Internet Explorer, users must manually enter their credentials whenever the browser receives an NTLM authentication challenge. But this isn't always true. Internet Explorer can be configured to automatically send the user's Active Directory credentials each time it receives an NTLM challenge. To do this, open Internet Explorer's Internet Options dialog and switch to the Security tab. Then click the Custom Level button and selecting the option Automatic Logon with Current Username and Password. Another FSSO setting that we must configure is called AD Access Mode. This setting specifies how the collector agent accesses and collects the user and group information. There are two modes, Standard and Advanced. Differences include the naming convention used to provide the domain and username. Standard mode uses the Windows convention, domain slash username. Advanced mode uses the LDAP convention, CN equals user, comma, OU equals name, comma, DC equals domain. If there is not any special requirement, use standard mode. Advanced mode, however, supports nested or inherited groups. This means that users may be a member of multiple monitored groups. Additionally, advanced mode enables FortiGate to apply protection profiles to individual users and to users' groups. In comparison with standard mode, protection profiles can only be applied to user groups, not individual users. Let's see the FSSO configuration now. This is the collector agent. From the FSSO agent configuration application, we can configure settings like the listening port for the communication with the DC agents, listening port for the communication with the FortiGate devices, enabling or disabling NTLM authentication, and enabling pre-shared password authentication between the collector agent and the FortiGate devices. From the FSSO agent configuration tool, we can also access the collector agent logs, which can be used to troubleshoot FSSO issues. By clicking on the Set Directory Access Information button, we can select either Standard or Advanced AD Access Mode. FortiGate FSSO configuration is straightforward. If FortiGate is acting as a collector for agent list polling mode, we must select Poll Active Directory Server and configure the IP addresses and Active Directory Administrator credentials for each DC. If we have an external collector agent, either using the DC agent mode or the agent-based polling mode, we must select Fortinet single sign-on and configure the IP address and password for each collector agent. Let's see now some of the diagnostic commands available in FortiGate for FSSO. To show the status of communication between the FortiGate and each collector agent, use the CLI command diagnose debug auth 
FSSO server dash status. From the collector agent side to show that status, open the command prompt, then enter netstat minus a minus o minus n. This will display all the TCP and UDP sessions terminating at the server where the collector agent is installed, including connections established to port 8000, which is the default port for FSSO communication with FortiGate. To display the list of FSSO users that are currently logged on, use the command diagnose debug auth FSSO list. For each user, we see the username, user group, and the IP address and name of the workstation from which they logged in. There are some additional FSSO commands, all of them under diagnose debug auth FSSO. For example, there are commands for clearing the FortiGate's cache of all currently logged in users, filtering the display of that list, refreshing the logon and user group information. Now it's time for the labs. In the next three exercises, you will install, configure, and test FSSO authentication using the agent-based polling mode.